Hi guys, so here we are in part two of interpreting exponential equations. Now, um, on this first question, they say to consider the expression 1.039 to the power of 2t that represents the interest earned on a bond where t is time in years. Now, they're asking us to estimate the yearly interest rate. Now, we know that um, 2 is n, right? So if you remember the formula from before, which is a of t for, this is for compounding interest, uh, equals p times 1 plus r divided by n to the power of n times t, where n represents the number of times in the year that the interest is um, accumulated. So with uh, knowing that n is 2, that tells us that this is twice in the year or semi-annually, right? Now, the question here says to estimate the yearly interest rate. Well, we know that the interest rate is first, uh, the rate itself, the rate part of this, right, we add to one. So the rate part of it is the 0 0.039, right? If we look just in the parentheses, it would be one plus this number, right, to the power of 2t. So the rate part of it, 0 0.039, uh, is where that is the part where you have the rate divided by the number of times. Now, since we already know the number of times is two, we can um, put that there. So we have the yearly rate is being divided by two. So now we can solve for the yearly rate by just multiplying two on both sides. So the yearly rate would be two, oops, whoa. That is a little crazy. Okay, <laughs> two times uh, 0 0.039. So the yearly rate is 0 0.078. We can also write this as a percentage, move the decimal point twice to the right, it will be 7.8%. Now it says estimate the monthly interest rate. Well, you could do this one of two ways, okay? You could either take your semi-annual uh, rate, which was 0 0.039. You know that that was R divided by two. Well, you want the monthly rate to actually be divided by 12. So we can multiply by 1 6 on both sides, which is really just dividing that rate, which is semi-annual rate, dividing it by six, and we get the estimated monthly rate, 0 0.0065. And we know that this is a monthly rate because now it's the yearly rate divided by 12, right? You could do it this way, or another way to do it is we already found the yearly rate. We could then take the yearly rate and divide it by 12. If we take the yearly rate, uh, 0 0.078, and divide it by 12, you see that we get the same exact number. So we get that same 0 0.0065. So you could do it either way. You could use the original equation and then realize that the yearly rate would need to be divided by 12 in order to give you equals the monthly rate, or you can take find the yearly rate and then divide it, you know, by 12 to get the monthly rate. So um, again, move this decimal point twice to the right, the decimal point will go there. So this is 0.65%. Okay, moving on to part C. It says, if a client invested $1,500 and the interest was calculated quarterly, write a function that could be used to determine the amount of money in the account over time. Okay, so now we need to go ahead and calculate the quarterly amount. Now, I'm just going to take the yearly rate since I have that 
and divide it by four to find the quarterly rate. So uh, 0 0.078 divided by four uh, is 0 0.0195. Let me make sure I wrote that down. Yes. Okay. So that's the quarterly rate. That's already the yearly rate R divided by four. And remember, that is what we add to one. So one plus the rate quarterly, which is the yearly rate divided by four, to the power of four T, because now it's quarterly, so it's four times in the year. And then the principal uh, amount, the initial investment is 1500. So this would be the equation. Of course, I can simplify inside the parentheses. So you always want to simplify inside the parentheses for your final answer. So that would be 1500 times 1 1.0195 to the power of four T. And this would be our function that would give us the amount of money if the rate was calculated quarterly. All right. Let's move on to number uh, two. And I want you guys to pause this video now and try this one on your own. Okay. So on number two, we have the expression and it's 1.042 to the power of 5t. So it's being calculated five times in the year. And it says that it represents the interest that's being charged in the company where t is the time in years. So again, this is just the uh, one plus r over n to the power of nt part of it. We're not really going to look at the uh, principal initial amount. We're just looking at the interest part. So they want to um, calculate the yearly rate of interest. Again, you have to separate because the rate part is the rate divided by the number of times that you are calculating that rate, the yearly rate divided by the number of times that you're calculating that rate. So you want to separate that from the one, right? So the part that is where we're calculating the rate, the yearly rate divided by n, which n we know is five based on the exponent. We know that that is being um, calculated five times in the year. That is where the 0 0.042 comes from. And so then to find the yearly rate, we can just multiply by five and that'll give us the yearly rate R, which is uh, 0 0.042 times 5, oh, not minus, times, and that is 0 0.21. Now, of course, that is as a decimal. If we want to write it as a percentage, we move it twice to the right. So it's 21%. That's quite a lot. Now, for the daily rate, we could do one of two things. Now, daily, uh, when we're talking about daily, we talk, we're talking about n is two, uh, 365, right? It's 365 days in the year. We're not going to talk about, oh, well, leap year, blah, 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 365 days in the year. So again, we could take r over 5, which we know is 0 0.042, and then say, okay, well, what would I need to divide by to get that to be 365? So um, let's see, 365 divided by 5 is 73. So if I take um, 1 fifth and I multiply it by 73, I don't know why I wrote 15. If I multiply it by 73, I should get 365 in that denominator. 73 times five is 365. So of course I will do that to the right hand side as well. So that will give me the daily rate. The yearly rate divided by 365 equals the daily rate, which is uh, 0 0.042 times, uh, actually we could just, instead of multiplying by, uh, 130, uh, 1 over 73, we can divide by 73 because it's the same thing. So that's pretty small, 0 0.000575, blah, blah, blah. Four decimal points is good enough for these uh, finance questions, so we'll go with 0 0.0006. Okay. Again, another way to do that, which I think is probably a lot easier, is if you've already found the yearly rate, or it might be even be easier to find the yearly rate, even if they ask you for the daily rate or the, you know, 
semi-annual rate. Sometimes it's easier to manipulate. Here I had to figure out like, oh, well, what do I, what would I multiply by the denominator by to get that denominator to be 365? So it, if you do have the yearly rate, it's probably just easier when you don't really know what to multiply by to get the denominator to be, you know, daily, semi-annually, quarterly, whatever. Uh, just take your yearly rate and divide it by, you know, how many times. And daily would be 365. So 0.21 divided by 365 would give me the same number. So that's another way to do it, which might be a little bit easier depending on the situation. Now, again, that is the decimal. If I wanted to write it as a percentage, I'm going to move that twice to the right. So the decimal point goes there. So it would be 0.06%. Okay. And you can write it as a percentage or a decimal. Just make sure you don't accidentally put a percentage on the back of what is actually the decimal version of the number uh, or vice versa. Okay. Let's move on to part C. Okay, in part C, we have assumed that the interest is compounded daily. Okay, so we already have that right there. Ali charges a $5,000 on her credit card. Write a function that can be used to determine the balance that Ali owes until she begins paying down the charges. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and write the function. That's what they want us to do. Now, her uh, initial amount that she has on her card is $5,000. But this is a little different because we need to figure out the function that can be used to determine the balance that is owed. So you might be thinking, well, normally you start with a certain um, amount and then you would pay that off. But here they're saying it's not actually decay. It's still growth because she's incurring interest on that money. So they're actually continuing to charge her more and more until she pays down that, those charges. So the equation that we're going to use is the growth because the amount of money that she owes is more and more and more. She's incurring uh, interest rate on that amount until she decides to start paying it down. So um, again, we already have the daily, which is nice. So we can already go ahead and write the equation. So A of T equals she has $5,000 and then she's uh, incurring, remember it's one plus the rate. So it'll be 1.06 since the daily rate is already, we already have R divided by 365, um, which is the point Actually, I'm sorry, that's 0 0.06 is the percentage as a decimal would be 0 0.006. And then to the power of the number of times calculated in the year, which daily is 365 to the uh, times T. Okay. Now it says in part D, the company generously offers customers three months no payment due. If Ali takes advantage of the offer, how much interest would she owe at the end of those three months? So, so generous of this company to give you, you know what, three months, you don't have to make a payment. We're just obviously going to charge you interest. <laughs> so nice of the company. So they're asking us, she doesn't pay for three months. Um, how much would she owe? Now, they are saying to assume, right? Because normally months do vary in uh, days, right? If we're in February, it's usually like 28. Um, and then in other days, it might be 30 or it might be 31. They're just saying, assume there are 30 days in the month. So in three months, three times 30, that would be a total of 90 days. Okay. So now normally, right, we would have T, which is T is the number of years that have passed, but here we're not looking at the number of years. We're looking at a specific number of days. So multiplying 365 by the number of years won't 
do anything for us because there hasn't been number of years. There's just been amount of days that have passed. So the power itself would just be 90. Uh, because the whole point of having the 365 times T is if you have a number of years, then that will calculate how many days total there are, right? 365 times the number of years. But there hasn't been certain number of years that have passed, just how many days. So the exponent itself would be 90. So I'm just going to go ahead and calculate uh, this using my calculator. So we have 5,000 times 1.0006 to the power of 90. So we get $5,277.34. Okay, now let's circle back to the question is always a good idea with this real world problems. What did they ask us to do? So they asked us how much interest does she owe? So interest is just how much was added on to that balance because she didn't pay for those three months. So it's not 5,277. That's the balance. That's how much now she owes total. But the initial $5,000 were charges that she made, not, you know, interest that she has to pay. The interest piece is whatever is above the 5,000. So she owes $277.34 in interest. All right. So let's move on to the challenge question. Okay, so I want you to go ahead and pause this video now and try this challenge question on your own. Okay. So this expression represents the interest that a bank pays on a savings account. What is the yearly interest rate? Okay. Well, the power, notice that it is N is one fourth. Okay. So T is being multiplied by one fourth here. T over four is the same thing as saying one fourth times T. So N is actually one fourth. So how does that affect things? Well, normally we would have the yearly rate is being divided by N, which means that we would be dividing by one fourth. But that gives me a fraction within a fraction. So what I want to do is I want to, instead of saying dividing one fourth, I'm going to write it as multiplying the reciprocal of one fourth, multiplying four, because it's the same thing. Writing R divided by one fourth is the same thing as writing R times four, multiplying the reciprocal. Dividing any number is the same as multiplying the reciprocal. So this will be our R divided by N equals the uh, rate that we have here, which is uh, 0 0.016. Again, the one part of it is just the from the one plus the rate divided by N piece, okay? Don't forget the principal does multiply in front, but the rate part of it comes from this piece where you have the um, exponent. So what is the yearly rate? Well, to find the yearly rate R, I will need to divide by four on both sides. So the yearly rate will be 0 0.016 divided by four, which is 0 0.004. Now I'll write that as a percentage. Move your decimal point twice to the right. So we get 0.4%. Okay, and then in part B it says the customer invests six hundred dollars uh, that earns interest that is compounded monthly. So write a function to show the for future value of the account. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and to find the monthly rate, I will go ahead and take that yearly rate divided by twelve, which will give me. Oh, I'm so sorry. 
You see, I almost messed up. I just thought about it. The year, uh, yearly rate as a decimal is 0 0.004. And then divided by 12 is 0 0.003, repeating. So I'm going to cut it off to four decimal points, 0 0.0003. Okay, so that is my monthly rate. And again, I will take that and add it to one. So it will be 1.0003. And then to the power of monthly would be 12 times in the year. So 12 times T. And then the amount that we invested, the principal is 600. So this is our function for the monthly compounded money. Okay. Last question of the day. Okay, now's your chance. If you got all the other ones wrong, try and see if you can get this one on your own. Go ahead and pause the video and try it. Okay, so let's check it out. It says the expression represents the interest that a credit union pays on a savings account. What's the yearly rate? Okay, again, T divided by three would mean that you were multiplying T by one third. So, Normally, we have the yearly rate divided by N equals the rate piece of our parentheses, right? So not one, not the 1 plus the 0 0.021, just the 0 0.021 is R divided by 1 third. Now, saying R divided by 1 third is a little confusing. So I'm going to change dividing this number as multiplying the reciprocal. The reciprocal of 1 third is 3. So this is R times 3. Three. So how do I solve for R, the yearly rate? We'll divide 3 on both sides. So we end up with R is, the yearly rate is 0 0.021 divided by 3, which is 0 0.0007. And again, we can convert that to a decimal, move it twice to the right, and that would be 0.07%. What you use in the equation is the decimal. So um, you know, you can write it as a percentage or you can write it as a decimal. It really doesn't matter. I just usually write it as a percentage because usually rates, um, when you're talking about them, are talked about as percentages. But for the equation, we always need the decimal. Now, the last part, it says a customer invested uh, 825 that is compounded monthly. Which of the following uh, functions uh, show the future value of the account? Now, Monthly means that it is compounded 12 times in the year. So already I can cancel out B as the correct answer option because in the exponent we have 13, 36 times T, which is incorrect. Next, um, I could look at the principal amount, but all of them are 825, so all of those are good. The only determining factor will be which is the correct monthly rate. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my yearly rate and divide it by 12, and that will give me my monthly rate. So I'm going to go ahead and divide that by 12. Ooh, now that I'm looking at it, I think I added one too many zeros. So... Oh, just kidding, guys. Let me go back for a second and move uh, this decimal point a little bit off because I, I don't know why I saw an extra zero. So it's just 0 0.007. So that would mean as a percentage, it would be 0.7%. Okay, so the decimal was actually 0 0.007. So I apologize for that. Let's go ahead and fix that guy right there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take 0 0.007 and divide that by 12, and we get 0 0.00058. So we got 0 0.00058. So we would, inside the parentheses, add that to 1. So this is incorrect, this is incorrect, this one is incorrect, this one is the only correct one. So the answer is D. All right, guys, so hopefully that video was helpful for you in compound interest, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.